Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Dan Slagle, the Care and Bridging Pastor here at Faith Bridge, and I am with Duffy Robbins, who brought us a great message today from Psalm 51. Yep. Thanks for being here, Duff. My pleasure. Always, always good to have you. Always a pleasure to come. Thank so, you. the burning question, no doubt, is just how deep did that needle go? <laughs> See, I knew you guys were going to pick on me for this, and, and, and you know, what a story. take advantage of this painful memory of a small child, but. I don't know. I just, I do remember it was enough to draw blood. I do remember he was hurt by it. I think, um, cause I, cause I, if I, when I first put it in, you know, it just was horizontal. I had to execute it just Ooh. right to have it be <laughs> vertical. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, great story of forgiveness <laughs> and redemption there, no doubt. Yeah. Well, we have had some really good questions come in. Uh, good related to the message. Anybody who practices their faith uh, with any seriousness, of course, didn't hear anything particularly new today. It's, right. it's just a part of the rhythm of being a Christian, confessing, yeah. looking for forgiveness, moving forward. But I have noticed and experienced in my own life that no matter how many times we go through this, learning each time that it's so much better to get right with God, it doesn't seem like it gets any easier along the way. Two questions. Why, why do you think that is so persistently challenging and what might we do to diminish some of that reluctance to come before God with our mm. sin? Well, yeah, me too. I've experienced that. I, I have to say, I think the first uh, question is a lot easier to answer than the second one. Because the, the, the answer to the first one, I think, is, you know, this the is the deeply rooted sinful nature mm -hmm. in all of us that makes us want to go it alone. Yeah. You know, that wants to deny the truth about God. And you know, until you really come to terms with that, uh, you, there's just, no, there, is, there is no good reason because you go, why, why, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you just come clean? Why wouldn't you just get it over with? Sure. Because there's something about us that, that, that we don't, you know, we just don't want to do that. We still are rebels in arms. That, to some extent, and uh, so I, I think that part of it is easier for me to understand. Um, the, the how do we remedy that, I suppose over time, although I haven't gotten to this time yet, so I can't <laughs> say, but I think, um, I think, you know, more and more it's developing a sensitivity. You know, Wesley talked about uh, a sensitivity to sin, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a des so that, we're much more aware of it. We know. In, in some ways, it's sort of like when you're newly married. You know, you, you, you commit offenses against your spouse. You didn't even mean to. Some of you right. did, but most of you didn't. Over time, there are fewer of those because, because a, you know more about what your spouse's mm -hmm. wishes are, but also because of a deep commitment to her that I don't want to grieve her. So, so I'm much more sensitive. I might even play it. You know, I might play it a little bit safer. I want to make. I, I, I want to. You know, I want to make sure I don't uh, hurt her feelings. So maybe over time as we become more spiritually mature and the love deepens and the awareness and sensitivity uh, matures, uh, maybe we, it's not that we're any more willing necessarily to ask for forgiveness, but perhaps a little bit less willing to sin. Yeah, yeah. You know. I, that deepening love is a, a, a good component. I had yeah. not thought about that. So we are blessed here at Faith Bridge to have a, a large number of former Catholics in our congregation. And as you well know, when that word confession comes up, they immediately go to the confession box, the priest, right. those sorts of things. Um, putting that image aside though, when is confession to another person a, a good and healthy thing to do? And when might we not go there and just keep it between ourselves and, and God. Right. Well, actually, I think confession to another person is almost always a good idea. I mean, and this is this is a principle that, you know, Paul talks about pastorally in Scripture, confess your sins one to another. John talks about this um, in his epistles. Um, 
but that's different than the sort of uh, Roman Catholic, uh, Catholic uh, you know, discipline of mm -hmm. say going to my priest, and, right. and 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 so that type of confession, or or going to a person who's going to help me feel as if I've really been forgiven, that I've gotten absolution, to use a good uh, Roman Catholic word. Uh, that's a little bit. That's a different type of of confession to a person. Um, but I think sometimes there are there are uh, uh, scars so deep, wounds so deep that uh, Roman Catholic, Protestant, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We need someone to walk us through that. Um, partially because maybe we don't want to recall these these memories or we don't want to talk about them. And, and, and talking about them is one of the ways that we sort of uh, defang them. Mm -hmm. You know, that, uh, that, that we name these things and we, and we go back in prayer and recognize that Jesus was with us. You know, I know that you know my, my former pastor uh, where I worked as youth pastor was a guy named David Siemens, mm -hmm. and he talked about this as the healing of damaged emotions, right. or healing of the memories, and uh, and he, you know, he felt that this was an important discipline, where for some people to go back and, and have someone help them walk back through these memories, uh, and walk back through them with Jesus, uh, and realize that yeah, I, 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 Jesus was there, even though it was painfully. That that was not a that was not a, a God vacuum in my life that that I can go back and and, and know that Jesus suffered with me there, um, and and so I think that there that 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 kind of a one on one uh, confession and 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 talking about sin, where I think uh, it has its limits or perhaps where it crosses a line is when we go um, that somehow that person has a a line to God that I don't have. Okay. Or that they have an access to God that I don't have because they're a priest or they are ordained or they are whatever. Right. Because we have a high priest who is Jesus. And um, and and so he's opened for us, the writer of Hebrews says, a new and living way right into the throne room of God. And uh, and 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 so that's where I think um, uh, we cross the line if, if we think there's a necessity to have that person so that we can have access to God. I see. Yeah. I think it's helpful sometimes, and it may be necessary for us to fully come to terms with what God's done. That may be helpful to have somebody, but that's where I think it kind of crosses the line. Okay. So one of the really great points of the message was the distinction between forgiveness and consequences that uh, we can be forgiven, but we cannot necessarily expect to be free of possible consequences. One listener wrote in, how can we deal with a constant guilt that sometimes comes with those consequences that just sort of brings us back over and over and perhaps makes the reception of forgiveness difficult? Yeah, yeah, that's hard. I mean, this is, this is one of the reasons why uh, we need to be aware of the fact that sin is not a game. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, that this is a, that, uh, that there are, I mean, the scripture says the way of the transgressor is hard. And, uh, and we live in a culture where we just go, ah, oh, yeah, you know, just not, not a big deal. You know, sin and, and confess and confess. But, uh, but those sins have consequences. Uh, over time and, and they develop patterns that become even more destructive and 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 so to, to, to get to your question I think part of it is uh, recognizing first of all that um, as, as I mentioned today that every sin is a grave offense primarily against God mm -hmm. and so I go but yeah I, I've offended Uriah or I've offended Bathsheba or I've, I've wounded my children or I've, I've hurt my wife deeply um, yes you did but, but the, the greatest offense is against God. And, um, and, and we go to him and ask for forgiveness. We go to them and ask for forgiveness. Um, but that's all we can do, and that's what God calls us to do. And I, I, don't know that, uh, I don't know that we'll ever, because we're, because we're human, I don't know, because we have memories, we can ever just go, okay, all right, no, no, no sweat. Um, because in some cases, we see we see those consequences every day, you know, in vivid ways. 
uh, the, the, the wife who's no longer there, the children who no longer speak to us, yeah. uh, the felony conviction that, that has changed my life. Mm -hmm. God forgave me for what I did, but, Still. but the court didn't. And so I think that's, that's the problem is, it, is, is those everyday encounters sort of reopen the wound. Um, and to me, there's no, there's no remedy to that other than these two things, which are big remedies to, to somebody. One is to say, again, my offense was against God. Take him at his word. Yeah, take him at his word, I've been forgiven. And then secondly, to recognize that God is a sovereign God and that God somehow in his sovereignty, and this to me is the great, is the great wonder of, of his sovereignty, is that somehow in ways I can't begin to understand, will take all these shards of broken hopes and promises and and somehow weave them together in this masterpiece, this mosaic that brings glory to him. I don't know how God's gonna do that, but I'm not God. Um, and uh, and that's where I have to kind of, that's again, I have to relinquish, I have to let go. I have to let go of my sin. I have to let go of the consequences of my sin. Um, or there won't be real freedom. And if I don't, then I'm in a sense kind of putting myself above God. We go, well, God, you forgive me, but I don't. Yeah. And and uh, and that is in itself kind of an offense against His Majesty. So we take on a much more forward view of the consequences rather than revisiting the guilt. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. We're that's looking a good way for the redemption. Good, yeah, good. Definitely. Okay, one more question. Um, thought this was an interesting one. How can we have the same posture before God that David had when perhaps we haven't done anything remotely as severe as murder? How, yeah. how do we keep yeah. that same sense of humility in yeah. our hearts? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, that, that judgment that I haven't been as bad as David is a judgment that I'm making, right. and I'm not the judge, yeah. you know? So, I, cause, because for God, all of it is an offense. And all of it is uh, is sin that equals death. Now, I I don't believe that every sin is equal in this respect. Um, every sin is worthy of a death sentence, but every sin doesn't have equal consequence. Um, there there, it's one thing to lust that doesn't have the same consequence as rape, even though right. the rape maybe was maybe was uh, seated in lust or power or whatever, but. So, so you could say that the consequences of them are different, but in terms of a legal breach of the law of God, Jesus said in Matthew five, same thing. Yeah. You know, so, so uh, I think that's that's kind of one of the ways. That's one of the correctives that Scripture gives us. Well, I didn't do that, and I didn't do that, but uh, but this is where recognizing that it's not about just what we do, it's who we are as sinners, as rebels, that is an offense against God. The way different people act it out is, is sort of a symptom of the real offense, the real offense against God. It's denying the truth about Him, making ourselves God instead of allowing Him to be. Hey, Duffy, thanks so much. It was a great message. Always fun to have you here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, Dan. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on another edition of Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.